We want DC power for NeoPixels, for example, or for battery charging, or for radio stations. Our power supply has to be strong and stable. Strong means in this case more than 60 amperes at 12 volts or so. And these days it has also to be good for the environment. But it should cost less than $20, including shipping. Unbelievable? That's what I thought too. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. Recently I bought a very stable frequency standard for cheap and discovered that they used a second-hand oscillator from a mobile tower to build it. I thought, this is cool. Give a professional gear a second life and save some money. Good for us and good for the environment. Then I discovered that a similar concept exists with used server power supplies, short PSUs. Because computer chips become obsolete faster than power supplies, it seems that thousands of those parts can be bought on eBay. In this video, we will have a look at a second-hand HP power supply. Make it usable as a 12 volts and 62.5 ampere power supply. Because this is ideal for LED lighting, we want to be able to switch it with MQTT. I will not show how you can increase its voltage to 13.8 volts, because it's too dangerous. But I'm sure you find a how-to if you really want. This is the power supply I bought off eBay for less than $20 including shipping. And in some countries you get them even cheaper. Different versions from different suppliers exist and all have in common that they are high quality and extremely strong. Mine was not dirty inside because data centers are air conditioned and remove dust from the air. And they all have very similar dimensions and also a similar pinout. Of course, they are not good looking because they were made to be plugged into a server rack. They also have no on off switch, which is the first problem we have to solve. But first, let's have a look inside. Oh, thank you, HP, for this nice touch. Glad you like the channel too. Because I show you the internals, you do not need to open yours. And if you do so, be warned. Capacitors keep their voltage long after the PSU is unplugged. I strongly suggest you film you endeavor. After you are buried, your wife then can make a little money by posting the video to YouTube under the motto he wanted to be like Mehdi from Electroboom. This PSU is very densely packed and has lots of inductors and one sizable electrolytic capacitor. For the power rating, it is astonishingly small and lightweight. This is usually possible by using high switching frequencies. With this probe, I can measure switching noise. And here, around the transformer, we find a signal with peaks at 2 microseconds, which is 500 kHz. The main electronics are on this board, where you also find a trimmer to change the output voltage. Unfortunately, only in a minimal range. More about that later. Let's now focus on the connections. On the right, we have large areas of copper on the top as well as on the bottom side. And here we have pins numbered from 27 up to 38. We could buy edge connectors like those to connect cables to these pins. Most of the makers just solder the wires on the pins, which is very easy because the contacts are of high quality. Speaking of quality, you can imagine that nobody wants to have a few killed processors and memory chips only because of a bad power supply. So we can assume that these power supplies are of high quality. They also are very efficient. This one, for example, 90%. 240 watts input at 220 watts output. Do you know why? Because the lost 20 watts are converted into heat, and because temperature must be constant in data centers, the air conditioning system has to remove this heat. 
So the operator has to pay about three times for the lost energy. This is why the fan usually does not run if you do not maltreat it too much. I assume they also choose a high quality fan. Back to the connector. This copper area is ground and this one is 12 volts. The same thing on the bottom. Unfortunately, there is no voltage if we connect it to mains. We have to connect pin 33 and 36 with a wire or a resistor, depending on the model. Mine works with a wire. Pin 37 is essential. It provides 12 volts even if the rest of the supply is off. Because it is rated at 2.5 Ampere, we easily can use it to power an MCU or even a Raspberry Pi. In my case, I will add a 3.3 volt switching regulator to power an ESP8266. Pin 34 can be used to measure the current. It gives a nearly linear voltage of around 1 volt per 20 Ampere. So you can save the 60 Ampere shunt resistor if you do not need a precise reading. Pin 30 is also ground and pin 31 and 32 are I2C signals for the PM bus. Pin 35 is a 3.3 volt status signal. It is high when the PSU is on. By the way, on pin 36 we see a smart concept. This pin is a little shorter than the others. So it for sure connects later than the other contacts and disconnects earlier. You find this concept also in USB plugs where they want a stable power before connecting the data lines. Brilliant! If you want just a manual switch, you connect it between pin 33 and 36. As said before, for some models you have to add a resistor in series. But where do you find this information? Just enter the model number and the word hack or so and you find the information for many PSUs. Maybe you search for this info before you buy one. Then you are sure you can use it. By the way, if you hear snoring in the background, it comes from my lab cat Dishka. I did not want to wake her up just for my recording. Back to the project. I decided to use a 5 volts relay instead of a switch or a wire to connect the two pins. Like that I can switch the whole beast with a tiny ESP01. This relay consumes around 70 mA and therefore I need an N channel FET to switch it. And because I use the 12 volt standby voltage, I insert a resistor which drops the voltage from 12 to 5 volts at the 70 mA used by the relay. Then I connect the gate via a protection resistor to GPIO2. For convenience, I added an LED to the same pin. And, as said before, I added a switching regulator for 3.3 volts. I would not want to use a linear regulator because it probably would become quite warm. Of course, it would be much nicer to create a PCB with these parts and an edge connector to attach it to the PSU. Maybe somebody creates one? I could have used Tasmota for the ESP8266, but I decided to write a small sketch based on our OTA template from video number 332 and the PubSub MQTT library. I stopped using async MQTT because I only had trouble with it. And I had to replace the flash memory as shown in video number 34 because the old 512 kilobyte was too small for OTA. The newer ESP01s have 1 megabyte flash which is ok. If you want it simpler, you order one of those for 12 volts and tasmotize the ESP01. I leave you a German link on how to do it. Now I can switch the power supply from Node Red, for example, and you can add it also to Home Assistance, etc. And does it work? Of course! I connect it to my 300 watt electronic load. So I cannot test the full power with it, but in HP we trust. I'm pretty sure it will meet its specs. And if we check the stability, it is quite good. 12.32 volts at idle and only 0.1 volts less at 27 amperes. For sure sufficient for a large LED installation. I suggest consulting video number 246 if you intend to build a extensive NeoPixel project. 
Dealing with such high currents needs some precautions if you want to become happy. You can use it also for the charging of a car battery or a radio transmitter. The only problem here, we need more voltage. 13.8 volts would be suitable for most radios and also a lead acid battery would be pretty charged at that voltage. And now it gets dangerous. This is why I will not show the how-to on this channel. Anyway, every model needs slightly different massaging. But if you want, you find the information in the interwebs. This was all for today. When I first saw this opportunity, I wanted to share it with you. Of course, I hope that the supply will be sufficient for all of you and that prices will not increase after this video. Summarized, we discovered an opportunity to get a powerful quality PSU for nearly no money. Because it is second hand, also environmentalists should love it. You saw how easy it is to create a proper 12 volts 62.5 ampere power supply with a manual switch. Everybody can use a mechanical switch. On this channel, we always want a little bit more. This is why we added an ESP01 to create a connected power supply. You even could connect pin 34 to A0 of an ESP8266 and return the current consumption via MQTT. This concept is particularly interesting in home automation scenarios because we can integrate it into our preferred system. If we need it and do not fear death, we can increase its voltage to 13.8 volts. Just Google for your particular model. As always, you find the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.